we're all going to lose tennis matches. Federer loses, Nadal loses, Serena Williams loses. But it's the way that we deal with those losses that will either help us improve quicker or will really slow down our progress in the game. Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training. Now losses are actually one of the best ways for you to improve the quickest because they will teach you exactly what you need to work on. Now if I take a loss personally and I feel like I'm just rubbish at tennis, I'm just not good enough, why am I bothering this? That will take me off that path completely. I'll lose motivation and I won't be training as I should be. But if I look at a loss and say, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? How did my opponent beat me? And I really examine those areas so I see where I was losing points. Was it a case of them attacking my backhand? Was it a case of them moving me and making me break down when I was on the run? Was it a case of me giving away too many free points by going for too many high risk shots? Whatever the answer is, you'll then find a solution. You'll realize, okay, it was my backhand. And now you go and work on your backhand and that will give you that motivation to go and practice those backhands on the ball machine or against the wall or with your hitting partner. So the motivation will come once you find out what happened on that court and how you can then fix it so that if you play the same opponent, you won't be losing that match because of this. And if you can take every loss as a learning tool, you can say, in this match, I wasn't moving properly. And maybe it's just one area in your movement where you're being exposed. A lot of players, they get exposed by the better players simply in one zone. So if I'm playing someone and I see that they don't like dealing with a high, deep backhand, I'm going to go there on every big point. I'm going to expose that weakness on the bigger points so I, I can win that match. And if we can take those losses, learn our lessons, and use that as motivation to work on those weaknesses, eventually if we keep doing that, we're going to start winning a lot of matches just because we've ironed out the game. We've worked on those weaknesses, we've worked on the areas where the opponents have exposed us in the past, and now it becomes much harder for opponents to expose us and to win those points. And this is actually very important for any tennis parents out there. If you have a child who's going through this journey, there may be a teenager who's playing matches, they're dealing with losses, support them. Instead of calling them a failure, instead of saying they're a loser, which I've actually seen parents do, and that is one of the best ways to then destroy that child's love of the game and make them give up at a very early age, you want to actually give them that encouragement of, okay, why did you lose that match? What happened? Don't be the negative voice, be the supporter, encourage them to examine, and actually this will help them throughout their life because we all deal with problems, but it's the way that we handle those problems that make us the person that we are. A good story that I have to tell you is, I remember playing a match, uh, I was about 18 at the time, and I was playing in this men's event. And I played this man, maybe his mid 30s. And the match starts and I'm destroying this guy. I'm three or four love up. He hasn't won a game, he's struggling to win points. And he starts shouting at himself. He starts shouting, you're a loser. You're terrible at tennis. Why are you playing? And as he's shouting that, in my head, I'm thinking, great, this guy's already given up. He's already uh, accepted that he's gonna lose this match. So the match actually went from being mildly easy to being extremely easy for me to win because of this man's negative emotions. And I left the court and I kept thinking about this guy. And actually, I, I still remember him to this day. I remember him all these years later. I remember him shouting at himself, calling himself a loser. And I thought, what a terrible attitude to have and what a terrible way for him to deal with playing a tennis match. But actually, that was maybe fed to him by his parents. Maybe his dad, as a kid, would shout, you're a loser, you're terrible. And if you're told that time and time again, you're gonna start feeling like that is the case. So it's so important for the tennis parents out there to be supportive of their child. Make sure that you're helping your child examine those losses and even examine the wins. Even if your child has won a bunch of events, don't feel like, okay, now they're going to be a pro player. Examine what they're doing well, think about what they can do better, and help them to become a critical thinker and analyze everything that's going on in the tennis court, but also in their life. Now, all of us as players, we're on a tennis journey, and the journey is normally to achieve our full potential, whatever that may be. It shouldn't be a ranking, it shouldn't be a tournament, because if you achieve those, you might then stop improving and you might stop playing tennis altogether. You might lose the love of the game. But if our end goal is, I want to be as good as I can be, 
I want to reach my full potential, what happens is it's basically a long road. If you think of a marathon, it's a long marathon and there's many, many miles and there's many steps that need to be taken until we reach that end goal, which is playing as well as we possibly can. Now, for most of us, we'll never reach our full potential. We'll always be striving. And that's actually a good thing because it keeps us motivated and it keeps us focused on that improvement. Now, a loss along that path is just a small speed bump along that road. A win can give us extra motivation to work even harder so we can replicate those feelings and those emotions that we experience when we win those big events. But with either one, the focus should be getting back on the road and carrying on that path towards reaching our full potential. Now in my last event, I traveled to Italy on the day of my match. It was bad scheduling. I wasn't prepared to play the match. I ended up traveling for 12 hours. So two planes, a train and a taxi ride later, I made it to the venue 15 minutes before my match. Now I tried to warm up as best as I can in that time. I ended up going on the court, but I just felt, I didn't feel myself. I felt like I was kind of carrying lead in my legs. Everything felt heavy nothing felt like it was working properly because I had been sitting down all day and actually traveling is so draining mentally, especially when you're dealing with long queues, you're standing in those queues for hours. It's not the way to prepare for a match, I can tell you that. So I played the match, the first few games, I was just trying to loosen up the body, get the feel for the ball because I hadn't hit a shot since the day before. And eventually in the fifth game, I was serving, I hit a serve and I pulled out my back. So my upper back, I ended up injuring it, and for the remainder of the match, I couldn't serve properly. I ended up losing 6-2, 6-1. It was a terrible match. I was so frustrated when I came off. I ended up having to withdraw from the rest of the event, and it just wasted a bunch of my money. Now, that is a loss where I really felt uh, deflated after losing that match, because the opponent I was playing, I felt like in a normal situation, I should be beating that player especially with all the work I've been doing on my fitness, I felt like I was moving much better in the lead up to that event. And actually that match ate away at me for a few days. It was really annoying me. The whole scenario was annoying me. The fact that I had to travel on the day of the first match, the fact that the uh, referee, the tournament referee, didn't schedule my match for the next day when I told them that I would have to travel that day because of the uh, issue with flights. So all of these things were really annoying me and it actually took me a few days to calm down and realize that, okay, it's one loss, but let's move on and let's focus and regroup for the next tournament. So a loss doesn't make or break you. And the great thing about tennis is there's always next week. There's always another tournament. We could always play better the next time round. Don't allow one bad week or one bad match to throw you off for the rest of the summer or the rest of the year. Use that match as motivation, analyze what you've done well, analyze what you could have done better, and work on those weaknesses so that if you're playing the same opponent in the same conditions, next time that match will be very different. And if you can take your losses as learning tools, as a way for you to examine the game and what you can do better next time, you'll improve so much quicker than someone who's taking a loss as if they're just rubbish at the game. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. It's been slightly different a little bit more about the mindset of dealing with losses and how we can actually accept them and learn from them. Now, if you have enjoyed the lesson, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys.